Hello guys, this is Guy the IT Guy, and today I'm going to show you how you can have a PlayStation Classic for $50. That's right, you heard me correctly, you can have your own PlayStation Classic system for $50. And it's easy enough to build out of parts of RetroPie. That's right. Your time is up. You can build a PlayStation Classic using a Raspberry Pi and an SD card. Yeah. Okay, now that we got our image going, we are now ready to move games over to the Raspberry Pi slash Retro Pi. Um, currently right now, you have to type in, when it asks for a username and password, uh, it's usually auto login, but the password is Pi. And then the password is Raspberry. I will show you that here in a minute, actually. Let me go ahead and reboot here. After you run your updates, you will find that when you try to get into your Raspberry Pi, it will ask you for a login instead of doing an auto login. And what you have to do, actually, is just type in Pi, P-I, that's the username. That is actually what you'll put in for the password. So let's go ahead and log into our Raspberry Pi. E I R A S P B E R R Y. And I'll go ahead and put that down in the description for the video so that way, you know, just in case when you update, you have that issue as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip back over to PC. And I will show you the easiest way to move ROMs over to your Raspberry Pi unit. So that way you move only the ROMs that you want. Say like you're gonna turn it into a PlayStation Classic. You move only the PlayStation ROMs. That way the only thing that pops up is PlayStation. Okay, so we're just gonna open any old folder, doesn't matter what, as long as you can get up here into your search area. And you would type backslash, backslash, retro pi. And as long as your computer and your retro pi slash raspberry pi are plugged into the same network, when you hit enter, you'll have BIOS, configs, ROMs, and splash screens. Now for the ROMs, this is where we have to go in and we have to select PSX. As you can tell, the folder is empty, so I'll just go ahead and scrunch that down a bit. That's the official terms, by the way. And here's the ROMs that I want to put in here. Rich Racer. I'm not sure. I haven't tested it zipped up yet. So let's go ahead and test it zipped up. And as you can see, I already have the BIOS. You'll have to go out and find that, but there's usually sites that you can grab the BIOS and the ROMs from. You know, places like Cool ROMs and whatnot. So, right now we are currently copying this ROM over the network using SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Okay, there we go, and we're done. And if you haven't noticed, for the sake of speed, latency, and continuity, so Sometimes when your Raspberry Pi is on Wi-Fi and somebody turns on a microwave, if it's close enough to the Wi-Fi box, it will kick you off or you could lose data. I am plugged into the Ethernet and I'm running a switch just right over here and the switch is also plugged into my computer so boom it just flies right on there. Okay let's go ahead and go back into the RetroPie area and we're going to need to take our BIOS and drop it in over here. As soon as we got our BIOS dropped into the BIOS folder, we should be good to go. Um, splash screens, uh, those are the splash screens, uh, but I don't have any downloaded, it's just the readme file right now. So let's go ahead and switch back over to our Raspberry Pi slash PlayStation Classic for 50 bucks. And let's go ahead and use the controller. We will have to reboot, I hit the wrong button. Start. 
and go down to quit and we want to you can restart emulation station so that way you don't have to hit that login but because uh, if you hit restart system you're gonna have to go back to the Raspberry Pi login so let's just hit restart emulation station and see if that can save us from having to log back in and no it will not so let's go ahead and just restart the entire system and here we are booting onto our retro pi this is our retro pi splash image we can change that after we update the splash images to where it's a playstation splash image which is really cool okay then we have to log in again i will leave the information in the description below of where you can go into configuration script and set that up for auto. Okay, looks like copying over the zip file does not work and it has to be unzipped. And of course it is a PlayStation configuration, uh, it is a PlayStation zip file, so We'll just grab the folder, copy the entire folder, go into our ROMs. We might have to reconnect. That's understandable, we rebooted. So it might have pulled up a different IP address. Because it's set for dynamic IP, which means it will change IP addresses every time it boots up. Okay, there we go. We're back into our RetroPie. It did change IP address and it changed it off a different subnet because it. I also plugged in my main. Okay, there we go. We're back into our RetroPie. It did change IP address and it changed it off a different subnet because it. I also plugged in my main Ethernet line going up to my main switch upstairs, so that changed my IP addressing scheme for my smart switch down here. So let's go ahead and go to ROMs. And we want PSX. And let's just go ahead and paste the folder on over into here. It's copying 17 items, but we know that. And let's go ahead and skip ahead. Okay, we are now finished with our changeover. Let's go ahead and disconnect our little folder. Although it probably really would not matter, but I like to disconnect it anyway. And let's go back into here. And let's, let's restart emulation station. I've had good luck with just restarting the emulation station before. And there we go. PlayStation, one game available. We are in business. Let's go ahead and go into the PlayStation and let's see how well it will play Ridge Racer. And by the way, the reason why I had to double click on it is because I actually have Ridge Racer in a file folder. If you just copy the whole bin file over and just drop everything in, uh. I forgot about playing Galaxians. If you can get Galaxians, if you can get a perfect score, you open up the Galaxians. Carl! No. I used to be able to do that back in the day, man. So far, so good. Well, let's select automatic transmission. Ah, oh, it's beautiful, ain't it? That pixelated goodness. Oops. 
Even though I do have my joystick configured, the game is not really set up for joysticks. Um, the original PlayStation controller had D-pads and buttons. Oh, I love this game. This brings back some memories. Back in my college days, yo. Drift that sucker. Get the drift in. So, as you can see, uh, I'm banging off the walls. Hopefully this is not too loud. It probably is too loud now that I think about it. I forgot to turn the volume down. I apologize, folks. There we go. That should be a little bit better. Not as loud. Probably not drowning out my voice right now. Drift it. Yeah. Although, if you drift too much, the Lancia Stratos will just blow you away. But man, oh yeah, I remember having this game back in the day. I had the demo disc that had Ridge Racer, and it had a demo of Jumping Flash on it. And I think Tekken might have been on there, like one round of Tekken where you could play against the Yoshimitsu. But yeah, man, I, I worked at Walmart at the time. I just graduated high school showing my age here <laughs> just graduated high school started college I was going in for computer programming um, was doing my visual basic classes and whatnot and at that time Walmart would give you discount coupons if you were a Walmart employee you get discount coupons and I I got one for like Thanksgiving and I just saved it up and at the time they would let you save it up it was at the 0603 store for any of you Walmart employees that are watching this. You know exactly where to find that out. <laughs> but our store number was 0603, and I compounded all my coupons together, and I literally got 80% off of the $300 list price for the Sony PlayStation. I think I wound up when I bought it on release day because uh, at that time, Walmart did not have any kind of policies against backstocking. Uh, that's where employees put product back so that way they can buy it themselves. Um, they didn't have any policies against backstocking at that time. And basically they saved my PlayStation for launch day. I went in three hours before work, purchased my PlayStation, grabbed me a copy of Ridge Racer, and I think Doom might have been available. That are, came available a couple of weeks later. And I, if I remember right, I... You could add up the discount coupons. It was 80% off, $300 price. I think I only paid $50 for my PlayStation, maybe $38. With all my Walmart discounts and my 11% discount I had at the time on top of it, put it up to like 80 might have been 79 Yeah, there's a trip down memory lane. But as you can see, we now have a PlayStation Classic for $50. Now the case here... I originally paid $30 for that. You can now get this case. Uh, if I remember right, you can get it for $15. And they now have the newer Sony case. Uh, Sony case. They now have the newer Nintendo case where the buttons actually work. And somebody just released a Sony case. But that's $30 as well. But if you just get the standard Raspberry Pi kit that's 50 bucks, comes with the power cord and everything, that is what you'll get right there. And then you'll be able to fit your ras toss your Raspberry Pi right in there. You'll have, the, you know, the standard power cord. And everybody's got USB controllers. Who doesn't have a USB controller? And if you don't have one, you can get it for like 10 bucks on Amazon. I mean, this one right now is going for anywhere between $13 and $18, depending on the seller on Amazon. And as you can see, this is the one that I'm actually using to play with. See, I'll even push start. I'm having to turn my head because my monitor is in a different location. The little pixelated lady in the swimsuit. Oh, whoops, push the button. Guess. See? As far as I can tell, there is no controller lag. This is actually pretty spot on. So, in a, another week or two, I'm going to order me a PlayStation case. Um, I actually found a place that's it's on Alibaba. And they have old PlayStation cases, the old PlayStation Slim cases, the white ones. You know, they were 
You could almost call it a PlayStation Mini for the time. It was just big enough to put the CD in. Ooh, I made that guy slide. Spin out. I'm racing dirty today. But you can get the PlayStation cases that are smaller. Or you can get one of those generic games that looks like a miniaturized PlayStation. It's like $30 and it comes with some crappy controllers. I mean, 30 bucks, and you can already make it look like a PlayStation. Some of them have PlayStation 1 style controllers on them. You can find those all over Alibaba, <laughs> AliExpress, Geekwish, you name it, it's there. And so, therefore, you could have a PlayStation Classic here and now. As you can see, PlayStation games play just fine on the Retro Pie. I mean, this is not the one that was running. The one that was running is inside of my little Super Nintendo. That's my chip that's in my Super Nintendo. That's loaded up. I have every Super Nintendo game known to mankind on that sucker. And who knows, they might sell out. And you could put one together for $80. Just for $80, United States dollars, USD. You could put together a PlayStation Classic with PlayStation style controllers with USB cords for 80 bucks. That's buying the, the generic version of the PlayStation mini games or whatever. It has a, a 601 games on one of those weird little websites like Alibaba or AliExpress or Geekwish. And then get you a RetroPie setup for another 50 bucks. Toss that in there. And then bam, you have a PlayStation Classic when they're all sold out. But there you go. There is a PlayStation Classic right here, right now. Fully functional, no controller lag, no video lag, for 50 bucks. And you got it now. And this has been Guy the IT Guy. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you like the video. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. Hit that notification bell for future updates. And then go ahead and follow me over there on Twitch to get bonus videos and bonus content. And I will talk to you guys later. And always, thank you for watching.